Joining me on this video are two special guests, Entropic Society and Ghosty Mist. Links to their channels are in the description. Please be sure to check them out and subscribe if you like them. A big thank you to both of them for helping me on this one. Now, on to the stories. 24 year old female here. To start with, I do TikTok videos. Yes, I'm a grown adult and make videos for that app. I really haven't hit it big or anything, but I enjoy it as a way to express myself. Anyways, being a small creator means I know everyone who follows me. Maybe not personally, but I recognize all their names. It was one morning last month that I woke up and noticed I had jumped from 100 some followers to over 200. That was kind of shocking, but not as crazy as what I realized next. It was some 80 accounts, all with slightly different names, but the same profile pic. Creepy, right? But then I went to check my DMs. There was a message from each account that said, I'm your biggest fan. I practically threw my phone in a fit of cringe. I didn't recognize the person in the picture and figured it wasn't a joke. Once I recovered, I went on and blocked each account. Nothing happened again for a while until another month passed. Once again, I woke up to about 80 accounts, all with the same name, slightly misspelled, and a new profile pic. But again, all of the same person. This time, my DMs were flooded by him saying, Why you block me? I could make you famous. Really didn't know what this person was thinking and didn't want to find out how he could make me famous. Now I think it's important to mention that I had my Instagram account linked to my TikTok one. I didn't put two and two together immediately, but I had gotten a new IG follower in between the time that these two events had happened. This new follower seemed harmless. He would like and comment on some of my pics, we even talked a couple of times in the messages. There were no warning signs and he seemed pretty respectful, until one day we were chatting and joking about something when he said, I could make you famous. There really was nothing else to link him to the TikTok account, but it freaked me out. I told him about the whole incident that had happened. At first, he was sympathetic towards me, telling me how crazy it sounded and I shouldn't have to put up with things like that. Then, when I went off about how the guy was really creepy and probably had never been laid in his life, he got defensive. The sudden change was odd. One second he's comforting me, and the next he's defending the guy. He started saying things like, the guy probably isn't that bad, and maybe I should just get to know him. He's only trying to help me, etc, etc. I was kind of caught up in the argument, and it didn't click instantly what he was saying. We went back and forth for a little while until my suspicion started to rise. I asked him a few questions to try and figure out if he was the same guy, but he danced around them and wouldn't be direct. Maybe it's me being too nice but I didn't want to accuse the guy without proof or a confession. Like I said, this person seemed to be pretty normal. We finished our chat and didn't talk again for a few days. That's when my IG friend started to follow me on TikTok. The first message he sent me was some cheesy love song. It kind of freaked me out honestly for a guy I didn't really know to send me something like that. I didn't respond to him because I didn't know what to say and hoped that he would drop it or get the hint I wasn't interested in him like that. No, instead it must have encouraged him because soon my IG messages were flooded with him asking me out. It was overwhelming and again I ignored it. Soon the messages got more and more aggressive and he was calling me names and saying I was a tease. It finally all connected when he wrote, I tried to make your dreams come true. I would have done anything to support you. Making all those accounts wasn't easy. I blocked him from IG, but before I could even get to TikTok, he had sent me a video message. He had recorded on his phone pictures he had taken of me in my house. I almost vomited. Then he messaged me, I'm your biggest fan. Give me a chance. Nope. I blocked him and called the cops. His IG account was his actual picture and profile. They searched the area around my house because they thought he might be close by after sending those pictures. They found him a block from my house sitting in his car. There were no weapons or anything in the car and they don't think he was going to hurt me, at least not yet. 
but he definitely had some strange ideas about us. He told the police that he was my boyfriend and we were having a little argument. Needless to say, I have a restraining order against him now, and fortunately, he hasn't contacted me since. This happened two years ago, and it still creeps me out. I run a decently well-known page on Twitter. Nothing huge, but bigger than most. I'm used to having to deal with my fair share of weirdos. I'm a guy, by the way, and I still get some forms of sexual harassment. Some are guys posing as girls, and some are, I'm fairly certain, women. Either way, this has nothing to do with sexual harassment. I'm just using this as an example of what I deal with. This is actually kind of crazier than receiving nudes from lonely single or married women. I had gotten an influx of people coming onto my feed and saying nasty things about me. They were telling me I had tweeted things I never had, and when I confronted them about it, they would say I must have deleted the tweet, but I was still a disgusting person. It culminated with my messages blowing up with a bunch of angry people saying I should die. I really didn't know what they were talking about and started banning people left and right. But then one of the death threats had my home address in it. That scared the shit out of me. I asked the person where they got it from. Their answer was not what I expected. They told me they got it from me. That's not possible. I'd never give out my address or private info. That would be crazy to do. Anyways, the person had a screenshot of the tweet. They had taken it to remember where I lived and didn't have a pen and paper to write it down. They were legit coming to get me. They were so mad at what I was tweeting, or I should say the other person was tweeting. I looked at the screenshot and noticed it was a slightly misspelled version of my name, but had my profile pic and banner. It looked incredibly similar to my own site. The tweets that I saw this other profile post were clearly inflammatory and meant to incite a reaction, things I would never even dream of saying. This other me was for some reason trying to get people to hurt me. They would challenge people and give out my address. Fortunately, they didn't have my phone number because those calls would have been insane. At least I was able to talk this guy down and convince him that wasn't my profile and I didn't know what was going on. Naturally, I reported the other profile. How they hadn't been shut down already is beyond me. I ended up changing my Twitter name and haven't had a problem since. The reason it gives me the creeps is because of the thought of what would have happened if I hadn't talked the angry person down, or someone had decided to pay me a visit without messaging me first. Also, I'm not sure how the fake profile got my address in the first place. They never did catch the person with the fake profile, and why they chose me, I still don't know. So I've kind of been wanting to post this for a while, but a combination of technical difficulties and residual fear have prevented me from doing so thus far. Now, though it is the middle of the night, and I have got nothing better to do, so I'm going to get this off my chest. I grew up with parents who were reasonable, loving people, but who were also more than a little paranoid when it came to the internet. Anything that allowed anonymous communication in any form was banned, point blank, from the household. Even Club Penguin wasn't allowed because you could chat in it. Naturally, when I got my first laptop at 12, the first thing I did was start talking to people online. I wasn't going into chat rooms or anything because my parents' warning still resonated with me, but I also wasn't avoiding contact either. I ended up making a deviant art account, I know, I'm a bit cringe, where I didn't do much posting, as I lacked artistic talent. In spite of this, however, I was contacted via private message by a guy who I'll call Joker, because his profile picture was the Joker. That should have been a warning sign in itself, honestly. Joker just started talking to me out of the blue. I think I've commented on one or two of his pieces, or something, and he reached out to me to thank me for my kind words. We started talking. It turned out we had a lot of common interests. We played some of the same games, liked some of the same cartoons, etc. He seemed to really be a nice guy. I think it was maybe a week or two in that the first uncomfortable thing had happened, even if I didn't exactly think much of it at the time. The two of us shared a somewhat misanthropic view of the world, so there were a lot of dark jokes passed back and forth between us. 
Sometime about a week after we first started messaging, he casually mentions thinking that the world would be a lot better without him. I sent him a sad face and assured him that it wouldn't, as I quite liked talking to him. He didn't say anything more about it, and then I assumed it was fine. It wasn't. Joker talked about suicide a lot. His talking about it quickly morphed from passing commentary to long graphic rants about how much he hated himself and wanted to die and what method would be best for him to do it. I spent hours talking him down over chat, terrified that one day I wouldn't be able to do enough and he'd actually do it. His message started to get creepy in a different way. He started telling me how grateful he was to have me and how no one had ever cared about him as much as I did, how important I was to him. How he couldn't live without me, how he'd just die if ever he were to lose me. He was obsessed. Well, one day, a couple months in, my laptop breaks. It wasn't too bad, but it still took a couple of days before everything was back to normal. I logged back into DeviantArt to find dozens of messages from the Joker. They started off normal enough, but quickly became frantic after I didn't respond. The last message he had sent was along the lines of, I can't take this anymore followed by a link to a picture image. The image was a pair of slit wrists. The cuts were deep and fairly fresh looking too, with red inflamed edges and the beginning of an ugly scabbing just beginning to settle over the top. I was horrified. I quickly messaged him back, terrified I had just lost a friend, and he responded. I thought I'd lost you, he said. I thought you'd left me. I couldn't handle the pain without you. Don't you ever do that to me again. I said I wouldn't and he seemed relieved. He only got worse from then on. It reached a point where practically our entire conversation consisted of him either professing his obsession with me, threatening suicide or both. The stress was keeping me up all night. I was terrified that one day soon I would open up the chat and see nothing. I was utterly convinced it was my job to keep this guy alive and I was failing miserably at it. Joker kept escalating, until one day, nearly a year in, he finally said something that frightened me so badly, I had to leave. Joker started talking about how I was the last good person left on this miserable planet and stuff like that. He waxed poetic about how much he wanted to kill himself and he said that he'd finally found a way to truly be happy. He said the only way he'd ever be happy was in killing himself and taking me with him. That way we'd always be together, free from the cruel weight of the world. He started going into very detailed, very graphic descriptions of how he'd kill me. A lot of them involved carving out my heart and then clutching it in his chest and laying beside me as he took his own life. I was terrified, enough so that I did what I should have done a long time ago and deleted that account. For years following that incident, I never spoke to anyone online, even to this day actually. There still lingers a sense of dread when it comes to online interaction, so to the boy who I thought was my first internet friend, I don't know what your deal was, whether you were mentally ill or purposely malicious, or some combination of the two, but whatever the cause may have been, let's not meet. First of all, I would like to say that I am not the only victim of this person. This is just a recount of my experiences. Junior year, I began getting followed on social media by a shit ton of fake accounts. These accounts would go after the hot girls at my high school. At first, it was just a bunch of message requests, which could easily be ignored. Then one morning, I woke up to the sight of something so disgusting and vile, it would make Medusa jealous. I had been tagged in a pic of the micropenis this garbage of a human being had. I mean, this thing looked like the trunk of an elephant embryo. Gross. Untagged, blocked, reported. Account got deleted and all was well in my 16 year old world for a while. After beginning my senior year, more of these accounts began to pop up. This time impersonating people at our school. I began getting threats almost daily from different users about how they were going to send nude photos of me to my family, college, and post them to the internet if I didn't do as he asked. A random threat about sending a photo of me hitting a jewel, edgy to my college was thrown somewhere in there too. I've never been a mean girl, but when someone crosses me with threats, I leap into fight mode. I had no nude photos, so I knew he was bluffing, but still played along at first to see what he was wanting from me. Guy wasn't too bright. He wanted nudes in exchange for not exposing my nudes? 
okay. I ended up telling at least 15 of these accounts that I knew they were bluffing and to cut the act as if there were multiple different people at our school. Not to mention, it was eerie that he obtained this photo of me jeweling that I had not posted to any form of social media. I graduate, and I'm not too concerned about it anymore since I knew I was going off to college soon. However, he took it up a notch that summer, hacking multiple girls' social media accounts and even got his hands on one of my friend's nude photos that was saved in her My Eyes Only section of Snapchat and sent it to me, pretending to be her to coerce explicit photos out of me. About a week later, his IP address was traced. It turned out to be a guy in my graduating class. He was charged with 21 counts of child pornography and coercion. So, Mr. Micropenis? Let's not meet ever again outside of the walls at that school. It was December, and Christmas was right around the corner. It was late, around 3 a.m. or so. I was sick, so I was on a strange sleeping schedule at the time. I was bored, and none of my friends were online, so I decided to venture on a site called Omegla. I went on there quite often at the time, mainly to troll people, but tonight I decided to have an actual conversation with people. Big mistake. So I decided to talk to people under the anime tag because people on there were generally cool for most of the part. Of course, there were always those horny teenagers looking for a girlfriend no matter what tag you're on. I eventually find someone who isn't a bot and who doesn't immediately ask ASL, meaning age, sex, location. We'll call her Azula. Azula asked me what my favorite anime is and I jokingly said, Fat Albert. I knew I said I would, didn't want to troll people, but I couldn't help myself. A conversation ensures after that about anime and such, and she seems like a generally decent person. She often asked for my email, I gave her my spam mail, knowing that there's no real harm in giving that out. So we continue our chat in a Google Plus Hangout. She starts to ask to video chat and I declined, telling her that I don't even voice chat and my real life friends, but she keeps on persisting and I keep telling her no. I was starting to think that she was actually some pedophile. I told her that I don't feel comfortable revealing my face to anyone online and I don't really want to voice chat. She then said that she'll send me a picture of her face if I send her a picture of mine. So I let her send hers first. I then did a reverse image search to see if this photo was fake. Nothing came up anywhere so I knew that it wasn't fake. So reluctantly I took a picture of myself and sent it to her. I figured it couldn't do any harm. She then kept persisting to video chat, I kept telling her no. I then turned my computer off because I was tired and annoyed. I didn't think much about it, but I was planning on blocking her the next day. A day later, I got on my computer and was about to block her, but as soon as I got on, she messaged me immediately. At this point, I thought she was either stalking me or had no life and was at her computer all day. So I went ahead and talked to her. She apologized for being pushy and explained that she didn't have many friends and just wanted to know me. I said it was fine. So we talk about anime as well as a video game and such. A normal conversation for me. The next day, we talked again. She wanted to video chat. I told her that I'd voice chat since I did that all the time. Once we were in voice call, she kept asking me to turn on the camera. Her camera was on, so at this point, I was sure she wasn't 40 year old man. I told her that I didn't feel comfortable doing that. She said that she wanted me to video chat to make sure I wasn't a 40 year old pedo. My voice was quite deep, so I understanded why. So again, reluctantly, I turned camera on. 
After everything seemed to be okay, I could tell there was something wrong, but I figured she just was socially awkward. After that, things were okay for a few weeks, but one day she randomly told me that she had a crush on me. I told her that I didn't do online relationships, and she got really depressed over that. She kept saying how that every guy, five in total I believe, turned her down, and she is really sad about it. I didn't really know what to do at this point. I felt really bad for her because I knew what it felt like to be rejected and how awkward it is to stay friends with them afterwards. So I made one of the dumbest mistakes of my life. I said that I actually did like her back. Nowadays, there's no way in hell I would have done anything of this. But I was 14 at the time. I was young and dumb. So just keep that in mind. So I basically was in a fake, fabricated online relationship at this point. I didn't consider her my girlfriend, and only one of my friends, we'll call him Eric, even knew about her existence. In fact, one day he was in the group chat with us. That's when things started to get strange. In the group chat, we had a decent conversation, but it got weird after I left. Azul started asking Eric really personal questions about me. Eric gave her a runaround telling her that she should be asking me this stuff. She was asking him questions like, what was my last name, where did I live, etc. Eric didn't tell me about this, but I saw in the group chat. I thought it was really strange that she would ask him these questions knowing that I would see them when I got back. Anyway, at this point she kept asking me my last name was, remember, Azul was very persistent and she wouldn't stop asking a question even if you declined. So I find out that she goes on Facebook and searches every person with the same name, first name as I do. My name is very common, so there's a lot of people on there with my first name. I couldn't believe it, she spent days trying to find my Facebook. I've never seen so much dedication, red flags were definitely going off at this point. She eventually finds my Facebook and sends me a request. I decline it because I was very pissed that she was evading my privacy. She then started messaging me on Google Hangouts, asking me about my family members. My friends on Facebook weren't on private for some reason. She literally wrote down a list of them, asking them how they were related to me. I got really scared at this point. I knew I had a stalker and I did not know what to do. I blocked her on everything. I deleted everything on the net that had my real name in it. I officially went rogue. She eventually emails me on another email of mine. Don't ask me how she found it. I honestly have no clue. Perhaps it was on my Facebook before she deleted it. Anyway, she spams that email with countless messages per day. I block her and the email stopped. I didn't hear from her for a month. One day I accidentally deleted an important email so I went through my trash to recover it. In my trash were hundreds of emails from her. I nearly soiled myself in fear. The last email was from that day. So in morbid curiosity I read some of the emails. What I found was nothing short of frightening. She told me that she thinks there is something wrong with her, say it isn't so, and that she enjoys and gets off on the pain of others, and she said that she knows where I lived and was going to fly over here and live with me. I was so scared at this point I honestly worried that she was going to kill me. I deleted that email account and have been off the grid ever since. So crazy sadistic stalker on the internet.
let's not meet ever again. Okay, so this just happened to me a little while ago, at 4.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just in case anyone's in a different time zone and sees this. I was laying on my bed, relaxing, after I reorganized my clothes and threw out old ones I never wore anymore, or things that were too small, and the ones I just didn't want. But all of a sudden, I get a phone call from my good friend, let's call her Ray. So, thinking that Ray needed someone to vent out to, someone to talk to her, I answered with the usual, hello? And what came next threw me off a little bit. It was a man's voice that came through the phone, and the conversation went like this. Man, hi, I found this phone in a restaurant and your number was in a recent call log. Do you know who this phone belongs to? Me. Yeah, it most likely belongs to my buddy, Ray. Man. Awesome, can you help me get it back to her? Me. Yeah, definitely, I see her tomorrow after all. Man. Okay, so I can meet up anywhere, I'm free all day. Me. Well, I'd have to talk to my legal guardian. I live with my aunt. About... Man interrupts me. And I want $50 to return the phone. Me. Oh, well, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't have that kind of money. I'm only 16. It was at this point he was getting snappy at me, so I started getting snappy back. Man, listen, I can sell this phone on eBay for twice as much. 50 is more than fair. Me. Listen, dude, I'm a 16-year-old kid. My friend is only 16. We are both minors. Neither of us even have a job or a permit, let alone a car. I don't know how you expect me to give you the money I don't even have. He went quiet after this. I couldn't even hear his breathing. I could only hear the faint sound of tapping on a keyboard as I listened for his response. It never came. So I decided to add on a little thought that came to my head. Me. How did you even get into her phone? She has a password on it. The typing continued for a few seconds before he hung up. I was freaking out. I thought I just got my close friend's phone stolen and sold on eBay. So I called my aunt, I explained to her everything that went down, and I told her that I was terrified. She asked me to give her Ray's number, so I did. My aunt told me that she'd call the number back and see if she could get him to give the phone back. If not, she was calling the police. So in the meantime, while I was waiting for my aunt, I texted a group chat that had all my closest friends, including Ray, and told them about the situation. My aunt called me back and told me that Ray had her phone, that Ray was the one who answered and somehow this man used Ray's number to call me. I was terrified. I don't want my phone to be hacked, and I don't want my location out. She told me to turn off my location on everything so that way he at least couldn't find where I was. So I did that. I turned off my location for everything. Ray then responded in our group chat. She and I called, and she told me about a bunch of wrong number calls she got yesterday. But, she admitted this was the scariest one, if this all was a prank. I personally don't believe this was just some prank, and I'm scared at what might have happened if I was dumb enough to meet this man. Especially since sex trafficking is so high where I live. So, creepy phone hacker man? Let's never meet or call again. <laughs> 